and there's a big debate about what constitutes the proper cell size and how they should configure everything. I say let the bees do that, you know. Amazing! But this hive, these hives develop more slowly than, than Langstroth hives because they have to build their combs from scratch. And, of course, the Kenya hive requires the same. That'll seat when we put the screws in. Where is that opening there? Now these hives started out as prototypes, and it's, it's my intention one of these days to put this together with Japanese joinery, woodworking tools, preferably without screws. They go out in the world and they fructify everything. You know, they just pollinate and uh, and uh, there's a whole magic process that goes on with that. Gentleness and consideration. So, you know, for me, it's just a wonderful kind of hobby that builds my consideration and, and also helps me see something these, these animals can do that I couldn't possibly do with those teeny little hands. <laughs> you just finally have a respect for something outside of humanity. They just floor me. And, and, uh, also, there's just something about their creativity and their uh, their whimsy. Some, I, 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 they're mysterious to me. I mean, I see them do things with concentration. I have no idea what they're doing, but I know what it all accumulates into by the end of the year. Mm -hmm. You know, it accumulates into these kind of gorgeous combs and families, and and I, you know, I see them as the kind of um, uh, the like, botanists for us that they they're they're not just pollinating they're also determining which plants are worthy of pollination they're they're you know kind of they're uh, like curators of of the plants for us and, and then we go and and we and I, I, we yeah we we mistreat them like the worst in the worst kind of way we you know we feed them corn we take away all of their honey not just not just some of it i mean so many of the beekeepers are just taking all the honey away making them live in filing cabinets making them reorient themselves to you know their environment every few months and without any of the adoration that they deserve and that they have I think always had or they had for like hundreds of thousands of years until just very recently when people seem to stop appreciating what they are and what they do and uh, I just think there are a link with paradise and if we lose that link we can't make this earth a paradise and that's going to be the greatest tragedy of of, of all time, of all existence. So... But we're not going to let that happen. Yes. We mustn't, yes, we will. <laughs> That's why we're here. Yeah. <laughs> but they're, they're like a great unifying force that can say, yeah, this is the way to paradise, because they keep us... Well, we can get you there. And so I think it's time for humanity to change everything in order to nurture the honeybees and, and see our fate as co-joined with them. Well, it's interesting. I've, on, uh, on some of my more reflective moments, mm -hmm. it occurs to me it's quite conceivable that the great sacrifice of the honeybee is that it's willing to risk its very possibility for it or existence here in the, on Earth as a kind of uh, gift to us in that when we see them beleaguered and enslaved and some of us are motivated to, to do something about that that in fact in the very effort to save the honeybee we save ourselves because what's required to save the honeybee is also required of humanity. The elevation of our consciousness to the level where we can seek healing from the realms that they, it needs to be found in. So on some level it's quite conceivable the bees have risked all that in a last desperate move 
to get at least some of humanity to to evolve to the next stage, to the stage where they can understand what it is that this creature needs to continue its existence here in the material world. And in so doing, do we evolve as well and heal ourselves. Now it's interesting, you know, this is a five-sided hive and some people say six-sided hives would be better because bees seem to be connected with six. Mm -hmm. This hive is not for the bees. This hive is for me. Five is a number for man. Okay. Now I don't. I'm not so presumptuous as to think I can improve on the six any more than the bee can, because the bee is beyond us in evolution. Okay. But what the bee is asking us to do is become more truly ourselves, and then we will be in a position to to cooperate with them and do some real work. They're asking us to do is become more human, become to become more our, ourselves. Because if we were truly ourselves, we wouldn't enslave them. We wouldn't truck them twenty thousand miles across this continent, back and forth. We would uh, revere them and exalt them, and and give them the lofty position that they need. So it's interesting. Everybody thinks this should be six-sided because bees seem to be related to six. But the outer form is for the beekeeper, five. Inside is the six. And I have a straw liner in there, which is circular. So the five meets the six via the circle as the interface. So if you want to talk to the bees, you have to go to the spherical, actually, mm -hmm. which is the infinite. So if you want to talk to these creatures, you have to go to the infinite, and you meet them there. Uh -huh. OK, Thank well, you. they're already there. Our problem is that we're not there, at least not in our consciousness. So ultimately, that's what they're asking us to do. Learn how to go to the infinite. We'll meet you there, and then we'll have a real conversation. Okay. Well, uh, can we take a look inside at the infinite? <laughs> <laughs> oh, let's see. Oh, really? You know, it's, that's what it really is. It's mm -hmm. like in the Russian uh, Orthodox ceremony with the censors. You know, the censers in the congregation is, to, is an invocation. It's setting up the circumstance for, for a higher consciousness. Yeah. So you can use smoke to drive bees to do your bidding, but I would say that's a misapplication. Mm -hmm. Or Maybe not a misapplication, but only one of its applications. It's a different intent if you think of it as trying to fool them as opposed to trying to honor them. That's right. Such a different spirit. So, if I had my druthers here now, I had thought I would take this off. I always, I like to, I bring them special flowers on days I'm going to work with them, or crystals. I just try to honor them and make it like a party or just a, you know, always a give and take instead of just a take. Okay, so it now this was a swarm. Hello, young ladies. Oh, look at them. Oh, you said they just showed up, you had built this, and is this it, the one? Well, this is actually a swarm. It came out of a tree somewhere. 